This vlog is sponsored by The Sopranos entire box set because I need to send some people around to make them deal with them with some common sense to deal with their utter and depraved foolishness I'm not playing I'm going in roll the team Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown and welcome social media family to my vlog. If you are a regular viewer of my vlog series and if you are a subscriber to my channel, either way, you will know that whenever I say to you, I'm going to give you the good, the bad and the ugly, you must know say that I'm going to give you that. Sometimes I might give you the utter foolish as well, but it's never going to be completely all -da 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 -da. you're not just going to get all slapstick and joviality. You're going to get some things that I find good, bad ugly, downright stupid, downright ridiculous and many more other adjectives that I can't even muster in my head at the moment. So be prepared. I might get a lot of these but I don't care because what I'm saying is based upon my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. So first of all, there's a lot of snake oil going around. There's a lot of snake oil in this business. A lot of it. Now you see, when you go outside your yard and you see these slugs, they mostly come out at night or at a certain time and they just leave that residue, that trail of that sticky, sticky stuff behind them and it's still there like at least a day or two after they've passed that area at the time. Well, the snake oil is the same thing, but it's left by people that deem themselves to be representatives of an industry and a fraternity that I'm a part of. Now, some of these people are very, very easy to spot because when you spot them, there's just something about them. Something just does not sit right with you about them. You ever met somebody and thought, yeah, yeah, I like what he's doing, but it's just something about him. Whenever you think like that, that's your inner mind, your consciousness telling you there's something not right with that brother there. But don't worry about it. He's going to reveal it to you in one way or another. And it often starts by trying to have a call with his brother and the phone just slips. Oops, snake oil. You trying to send an email to this person and you're not getting nothing back and they're moving shady and your fingers are slipping off the keyboard. Snake oil. So I'm here to bleach them out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, bleach them out. I'm doing winter cleaning. I'm not even bothering about spring cleaning. I ain't got that long to wait. I am winter cleaning your ass. Simple rotted things. I cannot afford snake oil on my being. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the consistency of it. I don't like the smell of it. And I do not like the residue it leaves. So I'm getting rid of your ass. So it's the bleach, chamois leather, bucket, mop, broom, black bags, wheelie bin, you're gone. You only got one chance with me, one chance. And if you mess that up, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes or the tofu if you're a vegan, because we've got a cater for all parties here. And the subject matter came across from a strange source, but it evoked what it evoked. And it came from a set of pictures that a colleague of mine took at an event recently. And the event was the round table that was held the other day. I was invited to go down there, not by the panel, I was invited by someone in the fraternity. And I said no. And the reason why I said no was simply because if I pick up the mic in one of these things, security is gonna have to get me out of that place because nobody is gonna get a chance to say anything in that place. I'm gonna say everything that needs to be said and I'm gonna drop that mic. And when that mic drop, it's gonna be broken and nobody else can say anything. But what I have said will basically cover the entire reasoning of why we were there in the first place. Security, security. Now it's come to my attention that there is a campaign of sorts um, for the reggae fraternity to march and hold placards outside the BBC for reggae music to have a fair and proper representation in their programming. My response was, it was a two-pronged response. In my mind, I was thinking, I think you might have to rethink that. But my heart was saying, oh no, for sit down, for real. 
sit down. Why I'm saying that? Just think of this analogy. Going to the BBC, holding up placards and demanding airplay in their programming is like me going to Buckingham Palace and telling the Queen, yo, Betty, you need to eat some rice and peas and some hard food every Sunday. You know? Good for you, you know? It might be a bit starchy. It might not be to your taste at the minute, but you would develop a nice taste fit. And when you get some jerk chicken, a can sawfish, I tell stew on the menu, it'll be good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if the Queen, Prince Philip, who's going to need some real hard food after the car crash he's had, if they don't have a liking for rice and peas, you can't force them to eat it. If they're not going to eat it, they're not going to eat it. It's as simple as that. What we need to do as a people, we need to put some Garvey in other room. And when I say that, I simply mean we need to basically serve ourselves, not just oneself, ourselves. Growing our beans, planting with rice, making sure the soil is good for the rice to grow and we get a good harvest of rice and peas. That's what we need to start doing. How can we be singing songs about injustice in the Babylon system and you wanna go to the BBC? I know some people's gonna draw for my other video about the whole Rodigan thing, but hear this, it matters not to me whether Rodigan plays my tune or not, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth if Rodigan is going to afford me airplay on BBC Radio 1 Extra. But I'm not saying, well, he's playing my tune, so yeah, the BBC's all right. That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. What I'm saying is at the end of the day that we need to basically be self-sufficient in what we're doing. And the problem that I have is when I hear about these meetings, it's the same people saying the same things, making the same mistakes, reaching the same conclusions only to get to the same point at another point in time to rinse and repeat. It is so prehistoric in nature. We're beginning to surround ourselves in aspic. That can't be good. What we need to be doing, we need to basically be preserving what we're doing from the studio door and the dotted line on contracts. Don't get me wrong, it's not all about money. I'm gonna give you an example. When I recorded the album with Bubblers for the Brown and Bubblers album, no money exchanged hands. Not a penny, not a penny. It was a mutual consent that I record and he basically provides the tunes and he puts it on his label, his website. Whatever money is basically made, we spit it down the line further down the line but the objective is is for us to make the tunes to give it to the people in the first place and not only that to make quality music as well that is the important thing but i'm going back to the snake oil argument since the album has been released there's been some people that's been going on with their snake oil salesman bullshit trying to manipulate situations where they want to boycott the album but not doing it in a way where it's overtly obvious that that's what they're doing but you can see by the wording in what they say and in the forum where they basically say it and it being in a public forum and not dealing with dealing with certain matters on a private level that they want to have certain people on side out of the percentage of people that they were talking to you will have a couple of idiots that will basically follow through to what that person said so as a result me bleach them out because you only have one chance with me one and if you mess that up you're gone you're finished you're done winter cleaning i'm allergic to snake aisle i can't deal with the snake aisle as much as the foolishness that's what we gotta basically deal with march to the bbc for what what am i gonna march to the bbc bbc ain't stopping me from doing what i'm doing they're not stopping me from doing what i'm doing Persistence beats resistance. If you're persistent and you are consistent in what you're doing, something has got to basically poke through. But if you're doing the same thing, and what I'm noticing as well, is the same people that's doing the talking. It's the same people that's doing the talking. So-called pseudo-authoritarians on this thing. They're not talking for me. May I tell you that? They're not talking for me. And all this is based upon stoked up hatred, stoked up division, stoked up foolishness to drive an agenda. And I'm not a part of that. I'm not a part of that. That's not what I represent. When I write music, I sing about life, love, loss, faith, lack of, unity, disunity. I chronicle life, my life. It's not just about me or this and me or that and me not do this and me not do that and me burn a fire upon this and me burn a fire upon that. 
I leave that to other people to do. That's their viewpoint. But for me, that's what I do. But the underlying overarching thing that we are all doing is under the banner of reggae music. You want to march to the BBC to put in reggae music in the programming where their definition of reggae music is all about misogyny and hatred and murder music. That's what they are gonna call it. That's not what I'm calling it. That's what the BBC are gonna basically call it. So why are you gonna waste your time going to the BBC when they already know how they're gonna deal with that? We are toeless. We don't have no toes in this team. You know why? Because we keep shooting ourselves in the foot so many times, we don't have no toes left and we're falling over in snake oil. <laughs> them out bleach them out <laughs> we're not getting mad today and all of this came from pictures this empress was showing me pictures of this event and i'm thinking oh my goodness oh my gosh oh my gosh what but i will say this there's one thing that came out of that meeting that i totally agree with and i want to give a round of applause to randy valentine I think he made one of the most coherent points in that whole meeting, that we need to stop tagging our music, UK music. We need to stop doing that. But at the same time, I understand why we do it. It's because to give our music an identity because of what was happening in Jamaica, what's happening in Europe. I get that, but we need to detag the UK from reggae music here in the UK, because I'm not a UK artist. I'm an international artist, but at the same time, I love making music. What I'm here to do is to reach out to as many people as I can, to pass the baton on to the new generation and give them a sense of the reality of what this business is, not the stardom, because the stardom comes later. The stardom you get from the people that you serve with your music. You know what I mean? It's not about the forward, the getting the forward and the forward and the pull up and the pull up, right? It's not about that. I wanna make another point as well. And um, this pertains to a minority of DJs. Not the majority, because the majority, you know, for the most part are very supportive in what we are all trying to do. But I heard a comment from, from someone in relation to the distribution, let's just say the distribution of unreleased material or even released material that other parties didn't have rights to in the first place. And someone made a comment saying, sharing is caring. I've got an answer for you for that. Let me share your girlfriend or your wife. Let me give her an indecent proposal tonight. Bring her to my place. Come make me deal with her real hard. See, you don't like that, do you? It don't sound good, does it? It don't sound, it don't sound good, does it? So how do you expect it to sound to us when you want to basically deem the illegal distribution of material amongst your own DJs? How does that sound to us? It's the same thing. So please, louder sharing is caring stuff and just support what we're doing. That's all I'm asking. I'm going to leave you in the words of Tony Soprano. I want to shoot your punk ass. And this has been brought to you by the words, bleach them out. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for stopping by. And as always, you done know the cool people, please. Please abstain from foolishness. And until I catch you on the next one, people stay blessed. Magan, roll the thing. Abstain from foolishness.